Hello, welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to use Rhino to create um, objects. I'm going to use some of the tools that we covered in the previous tutorial. And this tutorial is actually going to refer back to um, uploading or um, it's going to refer back to importing Rhino objects into 3ds Max. Um, for this tutorial, we'll find the file in tutorial three. Now I'm opening up a DWG um, file format in Rhino. And it's important to look at these properties. Now the model unit is in millimeters. We can change it into meters. Now I'm gonna press okay. In this file, we've got some drawings of the um, model and we can create this by using um, the template here. Um, for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to simplify this a little bit more, and I'm just going to show you how to make a simplified version of this. Um, as you can see, this file already has the layers set up, so um, I will start by creating a new layer so that I do not disturb what is in the previous layers. Now I'm just going to lock these layers here. And we're going to start by resizing this um, model just because we want this to be we want to make sure that it's accurate to the size that we want now off the bat i know the size of my tank needs to be 25 meters wide which is a lot but this is an underground tank um, facilitating under a building so to do so, I will use the polyline tool and making sure all my, some of these points have been marked. I might find the middle, straightening it up. We can use shift to make sure that our lines are straight. Whenever you have too many points just um, popping around because I have a few of them underlined here in our um, snap bar, I can disable them by clicking the disable. And now I don't have all these highlighted points. Instead, I can just focus on keeping all my line straight. And what I'll do is I want to get it closest to the end as possible. Um, and I could turn the snap guides on again, but I can, in this case, I can see that this is where I want it to sit. Perfect, now I've got a line um, showing exactly the, the width of this circle, the di sorry, dynamic, diameter. Um, now I'm gonna turn these snap tools back on and I'm just gonna snap to the point, the end point again, turn off, disable my snap points. And then this time I'm gonna type in 25, meters. So this point I'm now I've just realized my file is in millimeters and I can change that to meters, but I actually might I think I prefer to keep leave it in millimeters. So instead of so I want 25 meters, I'm just going to change that to in the units to be correct to match up. And as you can see, this is showing me the total length of the 25 meters. I'm going to press shift to make sure that's straight. And then, and then I'm just going to click, right click. And then I'm just going to press enter to close up that line. Now to resize everything, we look back in the previous tutorial, I showcase how we do this. Now that space, if we measure it, you can see at the bottom there, 25 meters or 25,000 millimeters.
Perfect. Um, moving forward, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna name this as scale so I know what I'm doing in future. I'm gonna create another layer and this layer, um, let's call it tank because now I'm gonna create the shapes in order to create this tank. I'm gonna start off by, make sure that I'm clicked onto this layer. I'm actually going to turn off a few of the unnecessary layers, just so I don't confuse myself. And you can do that by just turning off the light bulb. And by locking it, you mean, it means that you're not gonna click on anything unnecessary and move things around. Now with that, I'm gonna use the circular tool and press it in the center. Um, now in making these shapes in Rhino, there's multiple, there's multiple ways of creating a shape. Um, in this tutorial, I'm just gonna show you one of many. Um, so I'm gonna create that shape, make sure that it snaps to my snap tool, snap, it's, make sure that it snaps to all my lines. Um, and I'm actually gonna click onto that and then offset it. And I'm just gonna offset it by, let's say 500 millimeters. Now I've got two circular lines. I'm gonna extrude the outer line to, I might just, sorry, I will just change this perspective to shading so you can see that a little bit better. But the circular line, I'm gonna extrude it by typing extrude. And I know that I want it to be about 50 meters long, so I'm just gonna type in 50,000, enter. And with that second line, second circular line, oh sorry, and with that second, and now with that second circular, now with that second circle, I'm gonna type in extrude again, and we're gonna extrude it a little bit higher. It's just so that you can see what we're doing. Let's make it 60,000. Okay, now that we've done that, we're gonna take both shapes. Um, I can just click on those both shapes and print, type in cap. Now these are gonna, this is gonna make these two shapes solid, just like that. And I'm gonna take out, I'm gonna use the Boolean tool. I'm gonna use, now we can use so many different tools in this instance. Um, since I just wanna take whatever is in this circular shape with what's with this shape here, so minus the inner circle from the outer circle, I'm gonna use the Boolean, the second tool, which is gonna make a clean sweep. So I'm gonna press the first out of shape, press enter, and then the inner shape, which I wanna extract the shape from, and then enter. And that's just gonna give us this empty cylinder shape, which is perfect. Now there's multiple ways of doing this. Another way we could have done this is instead of doing all that, we could have used the cylinder tool. We could have found, um, found our line, make, make it a little bit bigger so you can see the difference. And then again, and then we could have extruded it, and then we could have extruded that shape just like that. And then cap, make sure it's capped. Yeah, sorry, it's already capped. Um, but essentially, like I said, multiple ways of doing things. The second way is probably a little bit faster, but if you had a little bit more in, um, intricate shape, Boolean split is great tool to use. Um, I'm gonna use the cylinder tool again. Now we've got a center line. I'm gonna use the cylinder tool to create our opening to our tank by finding the center point. We're gonna make this about eight meters wide. Um, so 8,000. 
maybe down by another 500, so we'll use 7,500 millimeters. Extrude that shape. Just like that, perfect. And this is when we can use a different type of Boolean split. The one we're gonna use for this is fourth on the list, and this will split our objects into multiple fragments. And by pressing enter, <laughs> now you can see that we've got multiple openings. We just delete what we don't need. And now to have some kind of closure at the at both ends, we're going to use another tool. Again, if you need a hand, please use the line tool as reference. Now in our shape tool, we're going to use this shape here to create um, a circular closed end guides, move them to a new layer, so change object layer, just so we don't have too much going on. I will also change the object layer for the curve of the of the circular shape, and I'll change the layer there. Now I can turn all these other unnecessary layers and it will stop. And just, just so that this is sitting nicely. I'm actually also going to delete those lines so it sits nice and flat on the center. Have the points there. Now back to that shape tool. We're going to find the center again of the shape. Now I know I need to we can rotate that. I know the tank is going to go upwards. Click on that. We can actually type in the amount that we want to uh, rotate by. I know this is minus 90, so I can just type it in like that. And if we view our tank, that should sit perfectly, just like that. Okay, and then we're going to copy paste by C, um, Control C, and Control V, and rotate. That shape one more time. Move it up. We know the height of this is 50 meters. So 550,000 millimeters. Going to disable those points. And there you go. Now we can flip this. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make another new layer. Because when I export this, I don't want any of the line work. So I'm just going to click onto the model components and change object layer. So if I turn off the other layers, I should have no line work. And I will also rotate this model so that I don't need to when I export it after I export it. Um, Click on it and go rotate. Anyway, I like to use point for this. Facing up, which we can do, so we can rotate it again. Find a point. There we go, that's perfect. That's all we need to do. 
Um, now we're gonna sh I'm gonna show you how to then export. I can simply export by clicking the item or we can export the entire file. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna click in export. Leave it in tutorial three, and we're gonna save it as a DXF file. Let's name that. Save. And this has been pre-done, but we want it to be a natural. Okay, and this should sit somewhere in the middle. Okay, thank you.